My name is uh, Cecilia Elizabeth White Dress Mercado Frazier. <laughs> um, and my Indian name is Wachiampis de Sapila Makayam Shagyamani. Those were given to me by my grandparents, except the Mercado and Frazier. Um, my, I'm carrying my both of my grandparents' grandmother's names. My mother's mother's name is Cecilia, and my father's name is mother's name is Elizabeth. Lizzie, two dogs, and um, they named me before I was born. They, uh, my grandmother uh, knew she was going to die, so she wanted to have a naming ceremony, and uh, that's those are the names that they gave me. I'm from the uh, Oak Pine Ridge, Oglala. I'm an Oglala Sioux. I grew up in Denby, South Dakota. Uh, I grew up with um, around uh, white ranchers and farmers, and um, I never knew the word prejudice because they were all they all treated me real nice, and they never said anything to make me feel like uh, Indian. You know, and then when I went to the boarding school in Pine Ridge is when I learned about the prejudice that I was Lakota, <laughs> and uh, but when I went to school, I I didn't um, speak English. I spoke Lakota, and when I was in school, they um, made us talk English, and it was really hard for me to uh, learn English. Uh, they used to make us stand up against the, if we say Indian words in class, they make us stand up on the blackboard and write, I will not speak Indian in class, Lakota in class, 500 times. and. Every word has to be perfect, you know, just like the beginning. And I went through all that. And finally, I learned how to speak English. And now I'm, I, I didn't even talk English, uh, Indian, to my kids to where they don't know how to talk Indian. I spoke nothing but English. So it, they're, they got mad at me, but for not talking to Indian to them, I did say tell them things, but they always thought I was just making words up. But now they're living on the reservation and uh, they're learning uh, to speak Lakota in school. Um, my uh, grandparents. Uh, I grew up in Denby to where I had my grandfather, Martin Red Bear and Ben Red Bear, uh, in Wolf Creek area. They, uh, Martin Red Bear was a chief there. And uh, every <laughs> once a month, they, all the people gathered there at his place and uh, my father was teaching catechism. He was translating it to Indian, and, and they had gatherings, and uh, they made us kids. Uh, when we sit, get they gather, they make us kids keep quiet and you know listen. And if we get noisy, they send us, you know somewhere to go play and, and uh, not to interfere when they're talking or things like that. We had to sit still and listen. That's I wanted to, you know, say about the way 
I grew up was that uh, we used to ride horses all the time and, and traveled in wagons. Uh, my grandparents on my dad's side, uh, every year in June, they um, traveled up in the Black Hills in a wagon, and they used to go along with them, ride horses, and traveled all over the Black Hills. And then by September, we get back to Oglala in um, but that was, uh, for me, that was, uh, to this day, it's it's uh, an experience that I'll never forget because our people are always talking about Black Hills. And I had the, you know, as a child, I was in the Black Hills camping from place to place. And my grandmother and grandfather, uh, they used to tell tell me about, you know, when I was, uh, when I reach, uh, uh, when you ministrate, they, they didn't have these, uh, you know, these uh, ca camp away from the house, because we grew up in log houses. But they always make us girls sit in a, stay in a bedroom or Stay out of the man's way, and uh, we had to learn to cook and uh, not cook, but feed and uh, sew and uh, things like that. We never, we weren't allowed to go into where all the people gathered, and it's so different these days because uh, young girls they just don't care. Uh, or they don't know, or they didn't learn that. They're, when there's a gathering, they're there, and they have their administration. And they always uh, tell us, or tell me, my grandmother, she always says, um, when in the future, you know, you're going to be among the Skawi Chasha, and don't forget that you're a, a Lakota first, and you're a girl, you're a woman. Uh, you know, they're going to be wearing uh, pants and stuff, you know, be showing their their shirita, their legs, and all this. And she always says, don't, don't do that. And it seems like today that's the truth now that young, young, especially the young girls, uh, we lost our femininity or something, you know, the way they dress and the way they sit and things like that, you know. That's what my grandparents used to tell me about the future, how it's going to be with, you know, thing, a lot of things are going to change. I am, um, my uh, grandmother, uh, Lizzie, two dogs, and her brother, uh, they were in that uh, wounded knee. Uh, my grandmother was about like 12 years old, she said. And uh, her and her brothers were in, her, their parents were, were killed there. And my grandmother took care of my two little brothers. They ran into a ravine and uh, they just kept going till they were out of the place. And she tells us things like that. And uh, when we were little, you know, it didn't, <laughs> I didn't really listen to it that much, but she used to, you know, tell us all these things. And uh, 
tell tell us about the future of things that's going to happen how our uh, living and lifestyle is going to change what we're going to eat she's my grandparents it seems like they knew what was going to happen in the future it's even the food that we eat they said uh, that we were going to be sick in the future and it seems like that's true nowadays because nowadays there's di di diabetics and there's cancer and all these things a lot of people are dying because of that and alcoholism uh, they always tell us you know it's going to be caused you know by us changing our like in the olden days we they were free to uh, eat their food but now we changed to this European way and now we're all getting sick Um, my uh, grandmother told me that in the future I was going to Sundance and uh, my when grandmother died the one that lived Lizzie and she used to tell me that um, I was going to be uh, carrying a pipe and I, it scared me when I heard all that and um, she said it will be the time when I won't have beyond the moon or anything when I carry a pipe and uh, that I would be involved in uh, Hochoka you know means a center of like the Sundance or center of some and I didn't think these things were going to happen and it has been happening to me. <laughs> My, uh, they always tell us that um, not to uh, pick up jealousy and uh, all these things because those are bad things to carry in life. So it's really hard, you know, as you grow up, you listen to things, and uh, sometimes I find myself kind of um, in those things, you know, and then I remember what my grandparents tell me, and I get right back into what they tell me, that those are bad things, you know. Um, my grandfather on my, one of my grandfathers on my mom's side Martin Red Bear and Ben Red Bear they were on that uh, Wild Bill Hickok show they traveled all over they took them to England and back again And they used to tell us all these things that they saw, you know, up in England. They saw the <coughs> the royal people, the king and the queen, and that they came back through. Uh, they went in the ship, so they came back on the ship. And they, they tell us all kinds of different things that's happening and uh, things are going to change for us, that we were going to be uh, losing a lot of uh, our traditional ways. And it seems like that's, that's the truth. We are losing uh, a lot of our ways. Because uh, these things were not written down. They were just told to us, you know, word by mouth. 
and I guess each time we tell it, maybe we add a little more to it or something, and we seem like we we need to get back to these things, but it, it's it's kind of hard to get back to some of these things because, uh, like I said, it's not written in a book. Um, like talking Lakota, you know. In when I was a little girl, we couldn't speak English, uh, Indian in class. But when I get home, we speak Lakota, and then when I went out in life, I spoke nothing but English, and and uh, when I came back, it's everybody's talking English, and it's <laughs> the elders or the older people or people that s still hold the Lakota language. They, it's always good to see them when. They know, you know, they talk Lakota, and I can talk Lakota, you know, freely. Um, through this Sundance, um, I've met a lot of people, and, um, I went to, like I said, I met Martin here at this inter international Sunday. I heard of him before, and uh, my uncle, Uncle Fullscroll, he he named a lot of uh, medicine men. And here, when I was dancing here at the international, uh, I have rheumatoid arthritis, so <coughs> excuse me. And here, uh, Martin was there, and here it seemed like he knew. He came over and we start talking, and he said, "Are you hurting?" So I said, "Yeah, I'm really hurting, but I don't want to, you know, let nobody. <laughs> I didn't want nobody to know, but." Here he asked me, and he brought me a jar of uh, some kind of root, I don't know, and uh, I drank that all through the four days, and I did pretty good. Um, afterwards, I wanted to see him again to see if I could get some for later on, but he by then he left, so I didn't get to see him. But whatever it was, it really helped me in those days. And I've been dancing here for a long time. Through, I've been, uh, Uncle Fool's Crow is my uncle, and he helped me along with a lot of things. He knew that I didn't have my period, so he asked me that help him with some medicines and I I know about it but I don't dare to use it because it's not for me to use it's his you know so I now they're all gone too Um, I don't know <laughs> what else you want me to My grandfather, um, it's Ben Red Bear. His brother's Martin Red Bear, and Martin is the one that was a chief in, in the Denby Wolf Creek area. And uh, he's... He had um, cattle that uh, when uh, uh, they first um, start enrolling the Indian people, they were giving them allotments and cattle and things like that. And so he had cattle, and uh, my other two grandpas 
Grandpa Dick and Grandpa Ben, they uh, sold theirs because they didn't have any money. But Grandpa Martin, he, like I said, he, uh, they gathered at his place every, like, maybe every two weeks or so, all the people. The Wolf Creek area, the Black Feathers, not, now they're, uh, Christian Science Church. But back in those days, uh, it was a Catholic church, but everybody gathered no matter what religion they joined. Because when they first, uh, um, after the wound at knee happening, the, the Christianity came in, the Catholic and the Episcopals were there. And so the Indian people either had to be a Catholic or Episcopal plus enroll and get their enrollment number and all that. So half of my family's Episcopal and the other half is Catholic. Uh, and then uh, we have our Indian religion. So I grew up with knowing both of the Catholic Episcopal and then our Indian religion. Uh, I um, I went to church in both. I went from Catholic church to Episcopal Church, and then in two back in those days, they weren't allowed to practice their Indian religion. That was secret, so they had we had the secret religion. You know, they tell each other and they gather and they have their Indian religion. So I went to all three of them as I was growing up, and. So my grandfather, he uh, he helped uh, everybody that came with food. Uh, he killed his a cow, and then he shared with everybody. And uh, or if he had money, he'd help out with whatever he can. And then when they died, all my grandparents died. Well. Um, people were still gathering at Wo that Wolf Creek Church, and it just took one person to say, uh, "This religion is just for Catholic." So that's when everybody broke up, and the Black Feathers they went into the uh, Christian Science. They went against Indian religion, and um, it was. At the Sundance in Pine Ridge, there was, uh, see, our, our grandfather, I have another grandfather, Spotted Crow, and then they, they went to Washington to bring back the Sundance. And so when they had it in Pine Ridge, there was Sundance going on, and then all these Christian science, uh, all these other church uh, religion came about, and. And then they had a rodeo because uh, the government didn't want the Indians to pra practice that religion by itself. It had to be with all these during fair time, they said. Mm -hmm. So that's how the Pine Ridge, how it started in Pine Ridge till finally it just broke away and now it runs by itself through Sundance. They, they don't have it uh, during fair time, all like that. And um, so my grandparents, they, uh, when they died, while well, they had that split, and in our church, no one goes to it anymore. It's it's in Wolf Creek. Uh, And my uh, grandma, Grandma Lizzie, her people, they, there are two dogs. Uh, one of my relatives is uh, Rick Two Dogs. He's, he's a medicine man. It seems like my relatives are, most of them are in Indian 
you know, medicine man. Our grandmother was a medicine woman. She died. Um, then Uncle Fool's Crow, um, he, he would, we, at home, we considered him as a chief of the medicine men, because when he was young, he was really, he was really good. You know, he was really, he helped a lot of people, and um, then, uh, as he got, after the 70s, 73, when did the occupation, they made him into chief. And um, they had the Sundance on Aunt Kate's land in uh, Medicine Road at Kyle. Uh, my uh, my father, uh, Jim Whitedress, he he worked as an interpreter at the Pine Ridge office when he was growing up, and. Uh, when my grandpa Martin had his gatherings, he used to do catechism, interpret in Indian. Then, uh, and my dad, he worked on them for uh, that 18 mile, 18 highway, they call it in Pine Ridge. They dug that by that road, they shovel that by hand all the way from Pine Ridge up towards Martin. They dug that day with team and horses. He was on that, and, um, and he was a bus driver for quite a while in Pine Ridge OCS. Let's see what else was. Oh, as I was, I was growing up. We um, when we traveled through the Black Hills with my grandparents, Grandma Lizzie and Grandpa Paul, we we um, it was a lot of fun because we ride horses and uh. The only place I get scared is when we go through that buffalo pasture. <laughs> I'd sit in the wagon underneath the seat, you know, because I was scared of the buffaloes. But as soon as we passed that, well, we start riding horses again. And we traveled way back in those back trails, and uh, rangers would come over and talk to my grandfather. They knew him for... Uh, you know, every year that we go up, they go up there. Uh, and they just tell him to watch the campfire, and and uh, they even bring like wild game over for for us. And uh, my grandmother, she picked up agates, those rocks. She knew where to pick, get them, and then you hit them with the, uh, she had a hatchet, you have to hit it a certain way, split it, and then there's those real beautiful pictures inside, you know, like some look like trees or a scene, scenery inside. And she used to take those to the uh, rock shop and uh, trade them with, uh, we didn't have money, because uh, we had horses and uh, we didn't need gas or anything, so she used to trade for food and uh, materials and stuff like that. And all winter long, my uncles and my grandmother they, um, you know, they tan hides and uh, make buckskin. And my uncles weaved uh, baskets out of willow trees, and, and 
So when we go up to the hills, that's what they use to trade for food and clothing and stuff like that. And there was, uh, we end up over at uh, uh, Custer uh, Pageant. And then there, as that time I was young, small, so uh, we used to go dance in front of the grandstand. We um, put on all our costumes and we'd go dance out there and then people would throw money at us and at that time I was a little girl so I didn't know any difference. <laughs> so <coughs> we used to get that and then give it to grandma and she'd get whatever we need for her because uh, money didn't, uh, you know, we didn't think that much about the money in those days too. And so it was fine until I was about like 13 years old when the last time we were up there and my grandmother, we we danced in front of the uh, grandstand. And as I was going, by then I learned English real well. And then I started hearing these things being said about us Indian people. And, I got mad and I didn't want to go out there anymore. I didn't like them anymore. <laughs> I, I I didn't like them for calling us, you know, those those Indians. Yeah. Look how they dress. Yeah, or stuff like that, you know. Uh, I didn't like that. It made me feel bad, and I I thought, why do I have to go? dance in front of them when they talk b bad about us like that. I told my grandmother, and uh, she says, well, just don't pay attention to them as long as you're having fun, you know. But I didn't like that, so I, I didn't go anymore. I didn't want to perform like that for what they were saying. So I, I learned about the prejudice that were the in boarding school I uh, there was a difference between us Lakotas and the half breeds they ca call them half breeds and call us Lakota and I wore uh, moccasins because I up to fourth grade I wore moccasins and I wore hair ties and dresses that my mother made and uh, as I was going to school, then we talked like Hota, so that was, you know, my my relatives you know, uh, was hard on us. And here the uh, breed kids, half breeds, they start saying things like when they argue at us and they say, "Well, you dirty Indian, you got eater," all this stuff. And that's when I first learned about this prejudice thing, too. And I grew up with these white ranchers as kids, and they never said that to me. I didn't know that till we got to boarding school and then up <laughs> at Custer, that fairgrounds. That's when I started hearing these things. I didn't know that we were poor. Uh, to me, I never felt poor. I always felt happy, and uh, I didn't know anything about money and all that. And I didn't realize that uh, we were so poor, you know, that... Um, but then I always thought that's our traditional way, you know, the way we eat. We eat papa, and we eat... Um, Timsila and all these, you know, we dry our cherries and plums. And I always thought we, it didn't matter to, I didn't know about this poor rich business back in those days. So I was happy just growing up. 
And as I start growing up, I see and hear these things, and uh, I still feel like I didn't grow up poorly. I, I feel like I still, you know, I, I know we didn't have the monies and all that, but I felt rich for the way they taught talk to us and tell us things, you know, and and help one another and, and uh, uh, you know, just, just being there for each other. Like nowadays, it's so different. When our relatives die, sometimes we don't even hear about it. We have telephone and cars, and still we don't hear about it. Back in those days, when someone dies, they come clear across from the other end of the reservation to attend a, a funeral and be with the family and help out. Nowadays, it's different. It's like... Um, like a switch, you know, you turn it on and then you turn it off and that's it, you know. <laughs> My uh, grandmother, she was the most wisest witch because she was always telling me about the future, about things that's going to happen and what we're going to eat. And the, uh, I used to like to ride horses a lot, and when I reached a uh, young lady when start period, then Grandma says, "You don't, you stay away from the horses. You don't ride horses. Those, you know, when you're like that, you go in that room and you stay there." <coughs> and uh, that was. We were to stay away from things like that, you know. We and we had we listened. We never argued. I never argued back at them. I listened and did as I was told, you know. And so I asked my grandma. I said, "Why can't I ride?" For <laughs> I asked her, I said, "Why can't we ride horses?" And she said, "Well, those are the sacred time, you know. You stay away from animals." And you stay away from uh, people. You don't step over men's clothing or their feet. Or if you see something on the floor, you st pick it up and put it aside, and then you walk through. <coughs> when you sit, you don't sit with your legs like this or like that. <laughs> Keep your legs together. Uh, you don't. See, those those go with this menstruation when you first become a lady. You you don't act that way. You know, you don't uh, you don't bend over in front of a man or people. You know, uh, if you have to bend down, you turn around and then do. But you don't bend over in front of them. Uh, so I tell my daughters that too, you know, I always tell them, you don't, don't do that. And they they want to know why. I said, well, that's what grandma and my mom <coughs> told me all my life. And that's the way I grew up. And I, I want you to learn the same way. That's being respectful. And that's our Indian way. Well, they always say, well, how come? When I go to school, this teacher is doing that. I said, well, that's because she's European, and we're like hotas, you know. We, well, they don't do that anymore. I, I used to go through all that with my eight daughters. And uh, now um, they see the differences and know the difference. So they come back, and they bring their my grandchildren back over to me and want me to tell them about it. Like right now I have a grandson here with me. Uh, he talks back to his mother a lot and at home. So she sent him over here and he's he's been a real good
boy, he hasn't been acting that way. Hopefully when he goes home, he don't act that way. He has a little more respect for mom, because I keep telling him, she's the only mother you have. That's what my parents, my grandparents taught me when I was little. Don't answer back, don't be arguing, because the, you just have them for a little while, and then when they're gone, they're they're gone. They never come back there, <laughs> and and so I, I tell my grandchildren that too. Um, and my daughters. I have two sons. One is adopted. My uh, adopted son. He's. Um, He's one of these um, alcohol syndrome uh, babies from the day he was born. But we love him, and uh, we've been talking to him. This is why we started the YMCA, too, is because we were concerned about other kids, why it's that way. And Out what else was supposed to be. I, uh, well, I, I really liked it during the summer when I was growing up, too. Is spring and summer is when our people gather at our place, and we used to go pick cherries and plums, and they all gathered. Uh, my aunties and every grandmas, they pound cherries, ground cherries, canned cherries and um, the plums too, and, and then they make a big, a whole lot, and then they divide it among each other for the winter. Nowadays, nobody does that anymore. Uh, back in those days, would it was, we had to have respect for everyone, and uh, everybody, when we there, we call him uncle and uh, Lexi and Tui and cousins, and we never uh, we learn not to have be disrespectful towards them. We, when they talk to us, we sit there and listen to them. We don't interfere or tell them no, that's wrong or anything. We just have to sit there and listen. <coughs> they, that's what they, how I learned. Um, as I was growing up, they, they didn't, I didn't argue back, like I said, with my parents or anyone. I just had to sit and listen. Um, Did I go through everything? <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, um. Uh, uh, actually, she's a aunt, or my great grandmother. She was a medicine woman. Uh, she. This is before I was born, this Greek grandmother. They um she they called her Wanahi Wapia and her name I, I just love her name is Mato Chantahepia Nachlachpa means uh, a bear hanging on the side of the tree was her Indian name. And she believed in in um, working with the spiritual, spiritual wanahi, you know, she has that medicine, that, and she, she lived. Uh, my aunt Kate is the one that told me a lot about her. Kate Fools Girl. Um, she lived away from the people they. Instead of living in tents or teepees, they 
made log houses. So they built her one away from the family, and she lived by herself. And uh, they take her, you know, meat and stuff like that over to her. But she stays by herself, and then when people get sick or need help spiritually, they go to her and she helps them. Well, then again down the line, I have an aunt named Mary Makeshine in Wolf Creek. She is a medicine man and medicine woman. And at that time, the government wouldn't let uh, the Indians uh, perform their uh, our religion. It was outlawed. If someone done it, they got arrested right away. You know. So my aunt, it was a secret thing in Wolf Creek. She, um, <coughs> she, when she, I seen her uh, work on my mother. My mother got sick when I was a little girl. But my aunt told us all to sit still and, and uh, pray. And then, um, I don't know, she brought some kind of root and uh, she used uh, at the ember of the fire and water and uh, she worked on my mother to where she was. She was really sick and she could help her till she got well. And people go to her and, and get doctored by her. And uh, she's she's the only one that I know there in Wolf Creek that was a medicine woman besides my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother, I, I wasn't born at the time, but I heard so many uh, things that my mom and Aunt Kate used to tell me about her. Like, I, I feel like I, I could feel her around me sometimes because I think a lot of her. Uh, but she's, they helped, uh, it's different from the medicine men's, I guess when they do their things, you know, they're helping. They don't uh, do like the medicine men where they have you weepy. You know how they wrap up. They don't do that. <coughs> or they don't... Uh, uh, some of the things that the medicine men do, my aunt didn't do that. It, it was a lot different with her. And my grandmother, great great grandma. Um, then uh, my cousin coming down again, Rick Two Dogs. He's a medicine man in Pine Ridge. And then my uncle Fools Crow. Um, I've seen my uncle Fools Crow. Uh, I used to live in Garden City, Kansas, and I'd come back for a visit. And uh, here he came over, and they wanted us to be at this uh, ceremony. So we went to the ceremony, and I seen him uh, perform on, uh, on this lady. She was sick, and uh, it was during she was already too far gone. Uh, he couldn't cure her anymore because it was too late. So he told her, he, he didn't tell her, he told the rest of us that her, uh, her spirit already left to Tunkashila. It's what we're seeing is just the body, the body of that woman. And uh she's she's going to give all of us water and and we're to drink it because it's a blessing you know because it's just her body her spirit is already with Tunkashila, he said 
And here, sure enough, uh, after that, she died. She, he couldn't cure her because it was already too far. He said uh, she waited too long to be uh, to go to him, so he couldn't do much for her. And then I've seen him do other things that that he did cure some people, you know, and like this one man where he, um, he was in a dancing contest and there was a, another, um, a girl that was competing against him from another place in Canada or somewhere. And <coughs> the grandmother wanted her daughter to win and this guy from, he's from uh, Kyle to it, or Wombly somewhere. And so they had the dancing contest, and the grandmother, um, she used a, a newspaper, an alligator picture in the paper, and uh, against this man. So this man was dancing, and all of a sudden he fell down. And he couldn't dance anymore, and, and uh, so the girl won. <coughs> and the man got sicker and sicker, and they took him to Pine Ridge Hospital. From there, they took him to Chicago and sent him to uh, Denver, all over the place. And they couldn't find out what was wrong with him. He was paralyzed. He, he couldn't even uh, talk. You know. So they brought him to Uncle Fuscro, and Uncle Fuscro, he he prayed for him, and it just it was all dark, and and he prayed for him, and then he goes, oh, you know, and uh, here he went over and grabbed something on that man's leg, held it like that. They turned the light on, and here was that picture of that alligator. It was uh, wrapped on around his leg. Nobody seen it. It was invisible, you know. So he took that, and he said, "Oh, this whoever sent this is going to go back into them, you know, and they'll be sick. But she's not going to die from it or anything. But she's going to feel that she did wrong." And so he held it up and blew it like that and he disappeared and so I, I you know I really have a lot of respect for Uncle Fool's Crow in that way and uh, a lot of times uh, this after the wounded knee occupation and later on he asked us to help him he asked my husband Curtis to be a driver for him. Uh, I helped him. He taught people talk to him, and some of them could, didn't understand Indian, and I'd interpret for him. <coughs> and it hurts whenever he tells them, you know, certain things not to do or to do, and they don't do it, you know. Of course, they're hurting himself too. But it, it, to me, it always feel like it took a lot out of him. You know, when they don't uh, go through what they were told, and then when some people do it, you could just see, you know, that the differences. You know, that I learned that when I was watching Uncle Fool's Crow do a lot of things like that. Talk to him, talk for him in English. And Indian, there uh, he puts his whole, you know, belief and everything into it. Mm. <coughs> and this um.
I don't know what else he... Maybe you could share some of the uh, guidance he used to, because he helped a lot of people with his words, giving them guidance so they could come back to their own Indian ways. Maybe those would be valuable words, if you could share some of those. Uh, when Uncle Fool's Crow was helping uh, people, uh, he tells them, uh, you know, because a lot of them uh, that I've witnessed says that they didn't know their, uh, some of the things, you know, traditional ways, but they want to know, and they ask him things, and he tells them, you know, certain things not to do or to do the, you know, like, um, it's, uh, but they, they don't listen. They just, it seems like they, they believe and they, again, they don't believe. And he, you know, like even to, a clean their pipes, you know. He tells them how, what to do, you know. But it, it, some of them don't do it and some do. But there's something here that I'm really confused about too. About when we uh, first got our pipe, you know, this lady bringing the pipe over, a good man and a bad man. And the bad man was uh, put away. And then it, it came down the line like this. And now we're at this stage where, I don't know, it's really hard, you know. Well, our sacred thing has be become something different. Uh, I know they say, it's bad luck to talk about it. It's it's not nice to talk about it, all this stuff. But the thing is that, uh, and I, I love these people that's taking care of the pipe, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for them. But the young man that's taking care of it, you know, uh, like when I was growing up, they didn't want me to uh, marry. And of course, this is our way. Um, grandparents would want us to marry into our own relatives. You know, we can't marry uh, your cousin because he's related to the, uh, grandpa, or grandma. In this way, we're still a family. If you want to get married, marry someone away from the family, you know. So uh, as I was growing up, that's that's what I learned. And I couldn't, I felt like everybody on the reservation is my relative because uh, my grandparents and mom and dad, they'd say, oh, it, this is how you related to this one. And this, they'd tell me all the whole thing. 